Hi everyone. In this video, I'll show you how can we access the specific column of a database table. If you have already worked with Spring JPA, then you must be aware that whenever we need to access the data from a specific table, we need to define the repository. So here we have the employee entity that has a couple of columns and this represents the employees table. And if we need to fetch the data from employees table, then we have defined one repository here. This extends the JP repository and it has the type parameter as employee entity. So whenever we need to fetch the data, we can make use of all of the method defined within the JPA repository. In this JPA repository, we have lots of methods. All of the methods are mostly returning the type T. This type T is the type parameter. So this is the entity type. Whenever we use these methods, it will return the specific type T for your entity type. In our test case, we have called this find by ID method by passing the employee ID one. In our database, we have some of the data initialized. So here we have the employee ID one. Corresponding to this, we have this particular data. If we call this find by ID, it will call the JPA method and by passing the ID, it will return the optional of type T. That means we will get the employee entity for this ID. This entity consists of all the columns that are there in the entities. But what if we just need these specific columns? So instead of whole bunch of columns, we need name and email. For that, what can we do? Whatever query we have in the budgetary, those will return all the data by applying a select star from employee table. Now we need a scenario wherein we need to fetch select name comma email from employee table. For that, we need to write a specific query. And that is what we can define within our employee repository. So here I have defined such query. Query is select name and email from employees. The same method find by ID, but this time it is just returning name and email instead of whole employee object. So by doing this, let's see if this works. So here if I run this, so our test is failing. Here it says fail to convert from type Java lang object array to type employee entity. In our find by ID method, we are returning the result in the employee entity object, which is this type. And here is the type Java lang object array. That means whenever we apply a select query, on specific columns, it returns the object array that is the values of all the columns. So there is no converter which can convert from this type to the output type. To get the values of a specific column, we need to have this written type. Same thing we have done here in our other method find name and email by ID. So it returns the list of object array. List represent the rows and object of array represent the values of this specific column. And now we have the test for this particular method. And in this method, if we just debug this method, let's see the written type. So here, if we look at our actual object, this is the array list of one element. And the first element consists of object array with two attributes. This is the name and the second one is the email ID. This is what we have expected in our test case. So this is the first way when you need a specific column, you can get them in the object array. But every time whenever you are getting that data from the database, you need to convert this or map it to some object. So this could be a TTS task. So you need a better way in which the data should be automatically converted into a domain object. There are two ways in which we can define such queries, which can automatically convert to a specific type. Let's look at the first way. Here I have defined one employee class, which has a couple of attributes. These are the attributes that we want in our written type. Now, instead of the employee entity, we want to get the result in the employee object. To get this data, first of all, we need a constructor in this which consists of all the attributes of this class. So here we have defined the all our constructor. 
and now in the employee repositories we have defined such query this time we have defined the query here that instantiate the constructor employee by passing the values to it here you can see we have the whole package name whatever return type we are defining if it is a class then we need to provide the complete path of that class this is the same query select e dot name and e email from employees but this time the values that we are getting from the table we are passing that to the constructor of the employee object for this scenario we have also added one more test here we are calling this method find name and email by id and this returns the employee object and we have the name and email from this if we debug this let's see what is the value of employee object the actual value is the employee object that has the name and email attributes in the employee repository class we have to define the select query by applying this thing right so we are specifically calling the constructor if we have more parameter to this constructor then this query could be lengthy and it would not be simple to read to make it a little bit better we have another way that is called the projection so whenever we need to map a specific field of the table then we can define one interface that is the projection interface okay in this interface we can define the getter methods because this is an interface that means we need not to define any implementation we need the getter method of the fields that we want to access in the query so here we have this name and email field for that we have getters get name and get email and now while accessing this data in the employee repository we have the query like this select e from employee e where id is equals to dollar one so in this particular case we are not selecting the specific column but what we are doing is we are mapping this type into the employee i type which has the getters method this is an interface we don't have any implementation so how can we set this value let's look at the employee repository test and here is the final test if we debug this here we are calling this find i name and email by id and we are getting this data in the employee i but if you look at the response actual this is the proxy object so this isn't the interface reference that we are getting but we are getting one proxy instance jpa has automatically created the projection type that implements the employee i interface and here we have got the values in this proxy object to get the result from the proxy instance we can simply call the get name and get email methods which are part of the employee i interface and this is how you will be able to get this data if you look at our jpa call it is calling the select employee id employee email and employee name but it is just returning this data into the employee i type if we just run this particular query let's see what happens so in this case it is only selecting the name and email from the employee table if you want to have the optimized version of your query you can use the class based reference and if you need the better looking queries then the interface projections are good based on your choice you can select the specific implementation so this is all about this video in the next video we will come up with something new till then happy coding